Hello and welcome to another of our Month of Azure Databricks brought to you by Advancing Analytics. Today we're looking at source control. How do you take a notebook and link it to source control so you can commit all those good changes into your repo? Now one thing that's important to note is you need to have Azure DevOps set up in advance for this and it needs to live in the same tenant as your Azure subscription. So I've got my workspace set up here and let's go and have a look at our settings. So under our user admin settings, we can set the whole workspace up and say what kind of source provider do we want to use. So I've got my user settings and I've got a few options. I want to go to Git integration and then under here, I've already got it set to Azure DevOps and I can click change settings and show you there's a few different options. I can use GitHub, I can use Bitbucket. In this case, we're using Azure DevOps. Okay, so let's save that through and that's all good. Now let's go and have a look. I've got my Azure DevOps set up. So I've already created an organization, I've got a project, and I've set up a repo, and I've initialized that repository. So that's there, sitting there, blank, ready to use. Now I've got a URL at the top, and that's going to come in really, really handy. And that, inside it, has the name of my organization and the name of my project and the repo. They're both the same at the moment. So I'm going to copy that URL, and we're going to use that shortly. Okay, so back in my Databricks workspace, going to jump over to a notebook. And I've got a really basic notebook set up. I've just got a little bit of markdown just so I can show you some code changes. And what we've got over on the right hand side is this revision history tab. And that's going to come in really, really useful. So you can see it's already got a change. So it's actually making a change and it's going to highlight the code that that change represents. So if I close that down and make another change, just go in there and add some arbitrary code to this. And that's going to automatically make a change. So I've got a revision history happening automatically, whether I've got Git linked or not, I'm automatically tracking change in my notebooks, but that just lives within Databricks. So if we have a look where it says Git not linked, we can tell it for this one notebook, I want you to go ahead and connect into our proper repo. So it's currently unlinked. I can change the status to linked. And then this is where we're going to use that URL we copied earlier. I'm going to highlight that, paste it in, now this has got organization and the repo, it needs another slash with the project name. So I'm going to take that Databricks project name, I'm going to put it in there, again, whatever the name of your project happens to be, needs to go in there. Now working on master branch, that's no, normally a no-no, but for this demonstration it's fine. I'm going to change where it's going to put it, I don't want another subfolder, just put it there, hit save. Now because that worked, it's saying it doesn't exist currently in the repo. Do I want to add this, do I want to do an initial commit to copy this code into the repo, and I do. So I'm going to put in a comment, save it, and that's now gone through, and you can see I've got a git commit ID, and that will link me back into Azure DevOps so I can see actually when that commit was made. So that's great, that's now saved in, I can see what change that represented. If I close my revision history, let's make another change. And it's changed again, cool, there we go. So back in revision history, it's got the new change, but that doesn't have a git commit. That has not been synced into git, so we go back over to our repo, hit a refresh, and we'll see the new codes in there. If we look at what's in there, that only represents our that initial commit. It doesn't have that changed again change in there. However, we do have that save now button on that version history, and you can see the also commit to git button. So we put some change in there, make a comment, if I can type. Okay, there we go, hit save again, and now it's going to go through, do that commit, we can hit refresh, see the comments change in it, so it's now changed again, and there we go. We've got our latest data in there, and that's now committed properly. So remember, that is happening on a notebook by notebook basis. You have to set it up on each individual notebook you want to link in, but it'll, everything will automatically have your version history in there. And be very aware of that tenant problem, because that can catch you out. So thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.